So good morning, everybody. I hope you're all keeping well and safe. Um, so today uh, I have uh, selected this topic, how to select a suitable project management methodology to talk about. So we know that there are several project management methodologies out there that uh, we have talked about before as well. So uh, when it comes to a project, uh, we'll talk about how to select the most suitable uh, methodology for the project. It's, I'm going to talk about a, a simple five-step uh, process that can be used to select the most appropriate project management methodology. So uh, this is how the uh, presentation will flow. So I'll give you a quick introduction uh, about the presentation as well as what a project management methodology is. Then we'll quickly see what these five steps are. And then we will go into detail on the five steps. Then we will uh, move on to some of the commonly used project management methodologies and what they are best for. Uh, and then we will look at the key takeaways of the presentation. So if I move to the next slide. So uh, we know that one size does not fit all. If we go to buy clothes or shoes or anything like that, we know that there is different sizes to different, uh, fit different individuals. So when it comes to project management methodology as well, this, uh, for, this is the same concept. One methodology will not be suitable for all projects. So what methodology you pick will have a profound and ongoing impact on how you and your team work. Yes, so we'll look at, uh, try, we'll try to understand what a project management methodology is. So a project management methodology, so in short, we say PMM, and we will use that uh, in the coming slides as well, is a set of techniques and practices used by an organization and its project team to effectively manage a project and increase the chance of meeting the in intended goals of the project. So that is what a project management methodology is. So your choice of uh, methodology will define how you work and how your team communicates. Different project management methodologies have their own pros and cons for different project types. So they work in different ways for different project types. So today, select the most suitable PMM for your project. Right? So we will move to the next slide. So these are the five steps that you can follow to select a project management pro uh, methodology for your next project, project that is in hand. Then the second step is you need to evaluate your team. Uh, third step is you need to evaluate your organization. And then you need to evaluate your stakeholders. And then finally, evaluate the tools in hand. So these are the five steps. And uh, next, we will go into detail on each step. So the first step is to evaluate your project. So when you are evaluating your project, you need to start from the end. You have to have an idea of what the end looks like in your project. Okay. So you need to know what the final deliverable is will look like and what is needed to get it done. So you have to first focus on gathering the initial requirements. So if the requirements suggest that a large diverse team is needed to complete this project, uh, you can pick a methodology that supports flexibility within the team. Then if you have a clear idea on the end result of the project, you can use a more structured approach like waterfall. And if your end result is vague and you don't know what actually the final product of the project will look like, then you can use an iterative methodology like Agile, where you develop the components incrementally and you share it with the stakeholders and get their feedback. So some other factors that you can consider uh, when evaluating your project is your project budget. Uh, you can evaluate what sort of a budget you have in hand to come the project if it's a large budget or a small budget uh, likewise then what your timelines are do you have a, is it a long duration project or a short duration project so what your project timelines are and then the size and complexity of your project whether it's a large project and whether it's complex or it's uh, a small project and not so complex. then what your stakeholders expectations are what are they expecting from this project uh, 
and then what the project type and what industry this project is run for. So it can be IT related, it can be construction related, or real estate, etc. So those are the key factors that you need to evaluate with regards to your project. And then next we will move on to take a look at how to evaluate your team. So the, the project management methodology is a blueprint of the project. So it will tell the team what to create and when to create it. So it will tell the team what needs to be done and at what stages each uh, component needs to be done. So it's like it's the blueprint of the project. So for this, the project team needs to have a good understanding or should be able to read the blueprint of the project well. So if your team, you, the team you have to run the project is not familiar with the methodology that you have selected, you will struggle to get the desired output and you will spend more time training your team on the methodology. And some of the team members might be resistant to the new methodology and might uh, in return cause delays. So what you need to do is identify the teams. Uh, so also you need to consider the team composition. Right? What's, what, what does your team comprise of? What, who are the team members your team comprises of? Are they highly skilled team members? Are they junior team members? Likewise. And you need to identify the team strength and weaknesses. So if the team thrives on collaboration, they collaborate well, communicate well, then a less structured approach like Agile can be selected. If the team is highly motivated and disciplined uh, and very skilled, then a Scrum approach will work. If your team has limited resources, then a resource efficient approach such as, such as a critical uh, chain project management methodology has to be used. So few other factors that you need to consider when evaluating your team is you need to look at your team experience, whether they are skilled team members or junior team members, what sort of trainings that is needed uh, to this team uh, to use this methodology, then whether they are capable of uh, independently organizing themselves and carrying out their tasks with minimal supervision and the team preparedness. Are they ready to take on the work and uh, run this project? And then another important point is the team location, whether they are remotely located or co-located. So in summary, it's best to pick a methodology that fits your team instead of forcing your team to fit the methodology. And next we will see how to evaluate your organization. So how your company is organized, its culture and its past records will have a big impact on your choice of uh, the project management methodology. So some methodologies only work for large organizations with its established hierarchies and others are more suitable for smaller and leaner outfits. So for instance, if you look at your past records, and it shows that uh, all your agile projects have been delayed and are poorly received. It's a best idea to, in the future, to uh, avoid the agile methodology because that's not going to work for your organization. So a few more things to consider when evaluating uh, your organization is to check your past records and experiences with the different methodologies. So like my example before, Take a look at the past records and see which methodology has worked best in the organization, whether it has been an agile one or a waterfall one or a hybrid model of uh, the both of them. Likewise, then you also need to consider the culture, the organization culture, whether it's a collaborative culture or people like to work uh, more in isolation. Likewise, then the organizational hierarchy and what sort of level of flexibility the organization uh, supports and the maturity level of the organization, whether there are a lot of processes and uh, mature processes implemented in the organization, likewise. And then the organization size, is it a large organization or a smaller organization? And then also the resources that you have in hand, including your internal team, as well as the external resources that you have access to, like freelancers and contractors. And also what industry you are in, if you are in an IT industry or construction or uh, real estate, likewise. So you need to evaluate what organization you are in. And next, we will look at 
next step is to evaluate your stakeholders. So this is, in my opinion, a very important uh, evaluation that you need to do. So when selecting a methodology, uh, the following factors need to be uh, considered. So stakeholder involvement. So some methodologies demand stakeholders to be regularly involved in, very, in every stage of the project, for example, Agile. So with Agile, you need stakeholders to be regularly available for feedback. If the stakeholders are busy, uh, you need to pick a methodology that requires lower stakeholder involvement at each stage of the project. So it would be a methodology where you bring them together at the beginning of the project and you get all their requirements and needs uh, documented. And then afterwards, they don't get involved because they cannot regularly be involved in the uh, project work. Then another factor is the stakeholder requirements. So how do your stakeholders work and what do they require from you as a project manager? So if the stakeholders are known to change project scope or frequently, then a more flexible methodology needs to be selected. And similarly, similarly if the stakeholders require daily updates, uh, you need to pick up uh, a methodology that supports that. Okay. So in summary here, since this is an important factor, given the importance of stakeholders in a project success, keeping their requirements in mind will make for happier stakeholders and more successful projects. Next is to evaluate your tools. So uh, project management tools are seldom uh, methodology agnostic. So you can have a tool they might say it will work for all methodologies, but that is very rare. Normally tools are developed to support a particular methodology. They are normally designed to work well for a particular methodology. Uh, therefore, the software tools you have access to and expertise in will impact your choice. So what you have expertise in and your team has expertise in uh, will impact your project management methodology choice. So to uh, evaluate your tools, you need to make a list of all the software tools you currently have in hand and have access to. And then you can list the limitations and capabilities. So with regards to each methodology, you can list down what the capabilities they support for that methodology or what limitations they have. And then compare their capabilities against the requirements for a specific uh, project management methodology. So ideally, the methodology you select should work with your existing uh, tool set. So if you have to buy new tools, you will not only have to spend more, spend more on the project, but will also have to lose critical time because you'll have to train your team members on these new uh, tools that you have uh, purchased. So it's best to evaluate your tools, understand what tools you have and what methodologies those tools support, and then use pick from one of those tools to support your methodology. Mm. So those are the five steps that needs to be uh, followed to select a suitable project management methodology for your project. So now we've looked at the uh, five steps. So we'll quickly take a look at what the project management methodologies, the more popular project management methodologies that are out there and what they, they work best for. Okay. So if we first take the waterfall model, it's commonly used uh, in software development. It works best for the following types of projects. So short, simple projects it works for. And then projects with clear and fixed requirements. So the, if the requirement is clear and fixed and the clients are not going to come and change it time to time, then you can definitely go with a waterfall model. And projects with uh, changing resources that depend on in-depth documentation. So when you learn waterfall model, you, you learn that there is a set of documents that come out at each phase of that uh, uh, cycle. So there's a lot of documentation that is done. So if your team members change frequently, then this method is best to be used because that documentation can be used by the new team members to read and understand and work on the project. Next, we'll move on to the agile uh, methodology and see what that is best for. <laughs> So the flexibility makes it adaptable for different types of projects. This methodology works best for when you don't have a fixed end in mind, but have a general idea of a product. So you don't know 
the final result what it's going to look exactly like but you have a general idea of what your product is or project is going to give as an output when the project needs to accommodate quick changes so say you are planning a project and then suddenly some market change happens and your client come back comes to you and says no now this this is not what we want we need these changes so in instances like that uh, the best methodology to use is agile if collaboration and communication are your key strengths and planning isn't so if your team collaborates and communicates well and there is a good gelling between the team this uh, methodology is the best one to use then they all we talk about a hybrid model i think uh, most of us are also familiar with this hybrid model we are the best of both worlds from waterfall and agile is used so for projects that require structure as well as flexibility so structure from waterfall and flexibility from uh, agile is combined so mostly this would be medium sized projects with moderately high complexity but fixed budgets so the budget is fixed and but you still would want a bit of flexibility to move things around uh, you would like to have an idea of the end product but you are also open to experimentation you will need close collaboration especially past uh, past the planning stage so here you here also the team needs to be collaborating well you have to select this if your team collaborates well other otherwise it's not going to work and then scrum so uh, i know most of us think that agile and scrum is equal but the, there is a small difference in scrum scrum is more of self organized sort of a team there is no sort of a leader that drives the team or a project manager that drives the team we know there is a person called a scrum master that that person is part of the technical team so in a scrum team the team members have to be very disciplined and uh, drive themselves to uh, achieve their targets so the scrum approach is best for highly experienced discipline and motivated project teams who can set their own priorities so they should be able to set their own priorities and uh, undertake the work and understand the project requirements clearly so this is more suitable to a more um, experienced team than a junior team it works for large projects but fails if the project team itself is very large so if you have the project is large it works but if your team is large and uh, in different locations and stuff like that then it will not work in short use scrum if you are developing complex software and have an experienced team at your disposal so you are doing a complex project and you have a very experienced team you can go with scrum next one we are going to look at is the critical path method so the critical path method is best suited for projects with independent parts so you know the individual components that you are going to develop if you require tasks to be completed simultaneously of a one task to end before another task begins you will want to use this method so in this you get a good understanding of what if you have a good understanding of what tasks and run parallelly what tasks need to run sequentially and what tasks fall on the critical path likewise this is the best methodology to use then there's another methodology called critical chain project management methodology so the ccpm works best in environments where resources are devoted to a single project uh, we spoke about this in earlier slide as well so if you have your resources and those resources only devoted um, for that particular project then you can use this methodology if you have a dedicated team for a project it works it works great works great it's great projects you will struggle with resource plan if you find yourself constantly over overworked or missing deadlines the ccpm methodology might be for you so if your team is overworked and you're always missing deadlines you can't cope with the work then this methodology is best because you will be having a dedicated team that it you won't be sharing your resources with other uh, projects or any other work then another popular methodology is prism but this is not for it related it's more construction and uh, industrial related methodology 
so it's mostly suited for large and complex real estate and industrial projects where sustainability is a key concern so it's more related to sustainability eco-friendliness likewise and then another um, commonly heard uh, methodology is PRINCE2. This methodology is best suited for large and complex projects with fixed requirements. So it's, I think, similar to Waterfall. It has a very large framework that it has it defines and very structured uh, methodology. So if you are in UK, you will likely want to know the PRINCE2 methodology. They use it uh, very often. And there are like separate certifications for brings to like uh, PMP certifications. It is widely used in the country and is a requirement for government projects. Um, so these are sort of the most commonly and what I have also sort of heard in the past, the methodologies. There can be others, but these are the most common ones that are around. So and the, the different uh, area like different applicabilities of each of them so so in conclusion uh, the final takeaway on this uh, presentation is as a project manager you have several project methodologies to choose from we saw that there are several ones that you can choose from and one will not fit all your projects so each of these methodologies has its own strengths and weaknesses. So you can't say one is better than the other. It has its own strengths and weaknesses. It will work well for one uh, type of project and will not work well for another type of project. So picking the right one will make running your project faster, smoother, and more efficient. So if you spend a little bit of time at the beginning and do your evaluation properly and select the correct methodology, it will make your life easier when the project starts and when you have to run the project because you you have selected the best uh, methodology to run your project. Um, so that is the end of my presentation. I hope uh, you gain some good uh, insights by listening to this presentation. So I'm open for any questions. Looks like there is no questions. Thank you everybody for uh, coming to the presentation.